wake up, Jason, wake up. It's time to do the mongrel gladiator review. We talked about this. Wake up, Jason. Hey there, purple people. Glad you could join us today. We're going to be talking about Sparrow Toys, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, Gladiator Mongrel. That's right. The boys at Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, shout out Jason Bienvenue, shout out Adam Managed to get this in our hand for an early review, uh, Wave 4, coming to you, you know, early summer. They're uh, currently in production, and they'll be your way uh, here before too long. But uh, we got an opportunity to uh, commandeer one of these bad boys, and we're going to take it out of the box and do a little review. What do you say? Let's uh, get started. Huh? Before I get too far into this, I just would be remiss if I did not mention the amazing production shots taken by none other than Trevor Williams, one six shooter that you can see on the Sparrow Toys website. And let's talk about this guy. Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Wave 4 Gladiator Mongrel. Fan torn mongrel service fodder for House Fangtron. And while vicious and strong, their dimwits tend to make them easy to outsmart and confuse to gain the upper hand. These mongrels are often seen in the gladiatorial games, providing entertainment and carnage before the main event. Transitioning from that amazing photography and that biography, let's go ahead and see what comes with this figure. What type of parts and accessories we got going on. So Gladiator Mongrel comes with three sets of hands. We got two gripping hands and... Uh, a pair of uh, scratching the ear, slashing at foes, eating tacos, uh, whatever else we can scavenge uh, in the gladiatorial arena, right? And of course, we got to talk about the weaponry. We've got this amazing axe. They put a lot of detail into the paint apps and, and, and to the texture of it. And, you know, short sword, dagger, I guess it really depends on how we're measuring it and what we're calling it. But, uh, yeah, he's got that, too. And then let's take a look at the paint apps on this guy. So first thing you're going to notice, or at least it immediately caught my attention, is those menacing eyes. This guy looks absolutely vicious and bonkers. Totally loving that, loving the spots, loving the attention to the detail on the fur. You know, his pauldron with the faction symbol on there, the leather detail on the uh, brace, uh, his tunic. You know, it's very well done. And dare I say purple. That's right. Purple. Thank you, Sparrow Toys, for purpling up this figure. You know, that means he's going in our collection and we're going to be building him up. Just an absolutely all around imposing figure, you know, uh, and and. I couldn't help but notice the articulated jaw. That's uh, going to have a lot of fun with that, right? Uh, how can you be a, a mongrel hyena battling figure without the ability to, to bite and chew? Am I right? Am I right? So, yeah, this guy's going to bite and chew, and, and he's going to have a good time in the arena. Let's get on to his articulation. So I'm starting him off in the T-pose. Uh, and the one thing I will note is even with the uh, armor here, it doesn't really impact the ability to get that arm up. Um, we've got the uh, double jointed and bicep crunch on those arms and getting to the legs also double jointed. Check that out. Uh, he's a bendy cat or, or cat dog hyena. He's a bendy hyena. That's what he is. So yeah, this guy, you know, he, he can, he can hit all sorts of pose. Got a nice little ab crunch there. Uh, he can do all sorts of, you know, hyena dynamic posing, which is not something you'll really see me doing. Uh, the, my homies call me Vanilla for a reason. But, yeah, this guy's a mover. He's a shaker. Got the left to right action on the head, up and down. Uh, the up is a little restricted, but I think that's by design because check it out. With that ab crunch, just bend him back a little bit. You're looking up, and then, yeah, bend him on over. This guy will do whatever you need him to do, yeah, whether it be a downward-facing dog, whether it be, uh, you know, hop keto, taekwondo, whatever it is a gladiatorial mongrel is supposed to do, he's getting it done. And how about some size comparisons? First thing I'm putting him up against is the Four Horsemen Studios design Zenday action figure. Good size comparison. You know, the, these guys pair up well. They could go on missions together. Uh, they could battle. They could do whatever they need to get done. You know, it's your toys. Play with them the way you want to play with them and just have fun. Next up, we've got the G.I. Joe Classified 
original alley viper now yeah gladiatorial mongrel definitely stacks up a little taller than him a little beefier but if i can make an observation we are talking about automatic weaponry versus bladed weapons so unless he closes the gap between them rather quickly or you know attacks secretly which is what i would expect a, a mongrel to do uh, this might be a tough battle, and the edge might go to the Alley Viper. But hey, I'm not reviewing an Alley Viper, so Mongrel's going to whoop him. And for a final size comparison, we've got this Super 7 SpongeBob SquarePants series, Sandy Cheeks. Now, I knew that this wasn't going to be accurate scaling, but I really just wanted to see what the Mongrel would look like up next to a squirrel that lives underwater. And uh, yeah, you know... Wanted to get an animal on animal fight, and, and I'll tell you, Sandy's formidable. We'll see. And as we all know, I can't bring a figure into the collection without giving her, hey, hey, don't don't eat the purple gang gang heart. But yeah, on the left, we got the wholesome warlock, Jordan. And the back, just uh, making himself at home with the mongrel. We got Richard Simmons. And off to the right there with the little shoot in the shelf brick and the Darla Ackerman cape, we got Van johnson that short little tattooed dude but yeah so welcome to the game mongrel we're going to give you an excellent home let's go ahead and wrap up this review and uh, i'll give you some of my final thoughts and so just wrapping it up with some final thoughts on this figure i tell you what i was impressed i like the way he moves i i, I like the the eyes he just has that insane look about him that one would expect of a gladiator mongrel um if, if you're new to the line Welcome. You're jumping in at a great time. Very accessible figures to get your hands on. Get them from your favorite, you know, vendor, uh, local toy stores. Shout out to Sparrow Toys directly and order. Find out their approved retailers and vendors. They will definitely be very accommodating and help you in your search to add these animals to your collection. And you know, I, I just I can't say enough about it. It's it, it, it's purple. I mean, they're they're definitely. Uh, play into my uh strengths there when it comes to this figure and and i like the fact that that it blends so well with multiple lines um you know it, it's not necessarily tied into animal warriors of the kingdom but you can definitely tie it into animal warriors of the kingdom so however you want to play with the figure remember it's your toy play with it the way you want to but you're definitely going to want to get one of these in your hands sooner than later and like I said, if, if you're new to the line, great time to jump in. If, if you're, uh, you know, an existing fan of the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, then you're definitely not going to want to miss out on this fella. And yeah, that's all I got to say about that. He definitely gets the Purple Gang Gang seal of approval. Shout out Sparrow Toys. Thank you for allowing me to review this figure. And uh, I'm going to just go play with them now. Hey, while you're here, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you can get more Purple Gang Gang content. And be sure to tune in every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the Purple Gang Gang live stream. Hey, Jordan, tell them who we are. Purple Gang Gang.